again from Patriots camp. In the official press conference, Floyd Mayweather announced his final fight on September 12th, and he declared that Andre Berto is a very worthy opponent while oh. taking a shot at Manny Pacquiao. Can Skip get some water? Take a listen. Tough competitor. Um, he's been knocked down, but he jump up off the canvas and continue to fight, and every time he go out, he gives 100%, and that's what we want. Why do you want that? Um, we want a guy that's going to push me and, and bring the best out of me. As we can see, Manny Pacquiao wasn't able to bring the best out of me. So I believe Berto is the guy for the job. Stephen A., you know Floyd. You spent a lot of time with him. Do you agree with that? No, I do not. <clears throat> but I want to say this. A lot of people are going to get on Floyd for a couple of things. First of all, I know Andre Berto. Okay. I've known Andre Berto for some time. I have not been impressed with his record over his last six fights, which were three and three. He started out 27 and 0. He was absolutely fantastic. I think he's a warrior, but the problem is when you're a warrior, ultimately you get hit a bit too much. Mm -hmm. I think a couple of people he has fought, has they've hit him too much. And because of that now, I don't want to call him punch drunk. Uh, he still has speed, he still has power, but I don't think he's any match for Floyd Money Mayweather. And Floyd knows that. Mm -hmm. If Floyd thinks most people weren't a match for him, why the hell is he going to think Andre Berto is a match for him? I think this is one of those situations where Floyd is, is to be quite honest with you, I think he's looking out for one of the brothers and sitting there and giving him an opportunity to make some good money uh, because Lord knows nobody else in boxing is doing that for a lot of guys. Um, and I think that that's what's behind this to some degree. And I also believe no matter what they say, that he's going to come out and he's out of retirement and he will fight again for fight number 50 mm -hmm. after he wins this next fight even though again it's boxing anybody could get caught yep. and Andre Berto is capable of catching somebody and hurting them I don't think it will happen because I don't think he's in Floyd's class mm -hmm. but in the sport of boxing never close your eyes to that possibility having said all of that the main reason we're discussing this is because Floyd went on record skip and said that the media is to blame for the Manny Pacquiao hype I am here to tell you he's absolutely correct the media is responsible for the hype, me primarily included, as well as you. And I'm going to tell you why. Manny Pacquiao is great. Manny Pacquiao has speed. Manny Pacquiao has power. I may tease him about the fact that he got put to sleep by Juan Manuel Marquez, but that's only after I knew he was all right. Because mm -hmm. I certainly wasn't laughing yeah. when I saw him get dropped like that because Manny Pacquiao is an incredibly nice guy and a good man. I just wish, wished him the best. I didn't want him hurt. But he got put to sleep by Juan Manuel Marquez. Caught him with that straight right coming in. Put him to sleep. Manny Pacquiao, outside of that, has been nothing short of sensational and clearly number two on the list as the pound-for-pound pound greatest in the world for years and years and years. We know he's got speed. We know he's got power in both hands. We knew that he wanted Floyd. And our attitude was, well, we know what Floyd's going to do, and we know what he can do. He's a box extraordinaire. He's a defensive magician in the ring. He doesn't take too many risks, etc. But Pacquiao was supposed to be the dude that was going to quell all of that. Mm -hmm. He was faster than Cotto. He was faster than Canelo Alvarez. He was smaller and considerably more elusive in a lot of people's eyes. So he was supposed to call. Floyd all of this problem and on top of it all because Floyd was took his time about taking a fight the Skip Baylesses of the world Molly was sitting up there calling him chicken I fight, was buck, watching. Buck, buck, mocking him and disrespecting the, him and all this way, other there, stuff there's only no. one me so go ahead that's right so, there so, aren't so, plural. So, so, so all right just, just, just for the there we go Thank that, you. I like that I like yeah. that I agree yeah. this this man Skip Bayless was doing all of that so you were so disrespectful so disrespectful to Floyd Money Mayweather, mm -hmm. you contributed to the swell of momentum aimed in this direction where people were trying to say he was scared. People was trying to say he was running for Manny Pacquiao. People were was. trying to say what it was going to happen yeah. to him once he got in the ring yeah. with Pacquiao. And so the hype evolved not around Floyd, but around what Manny Pacquiao was supposed to it's do your to fault? him. Uh, to, fault with, you? This, this, no, it's my fault. No, 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 no. I said it's mine too. Yeah. It evolved wow. around what Manny Pacquiao was supposed to do to him. Me, 
being the boxer, not the boxing aficionado, the likes of the Jim Lampleys of the world with my boy Max Kellerman and them, but on a lesser level, the fo the boxing aficionado that I am, yeah. I knew what Floyd was going to do to him. I knew that Floyd was wow. going to sit there and make him miss. I knew that Floyd was probably going to hurt his shoulder because he was going to miss about 400 times. I saw all of that coming. Yeah. So I was sitting there saying what Floyd was going to do. Skip was swearing what Manny Pacquiao was going to do. Everybody in the media was jumping on that bandwagon, whether it was on my side or his side. So we did, as an institution, contribute to the hype because we thought Manny Pacquiao was going to put up a better display. Mm -hmm. That's what it was. Because we always, we always knew what, Floyd, what fight Floyd was going to fight. But it was hyped mm -hmm. because of what we thought Manny Pacquiao mm -hmm. was going to do. And then he didn't end up doing it. So Floyd is basically saying, that's y'all fault. I told y'all I was going to go in the ring and give him a boxing lesson. Y'all believed all this hype that he was going to come and knock me out. Shame on y'all. And that's a good point on Floyd's part. It's a good point. This man across from me is unbelievable. <laughs> first of all, now that you have dismissed Birdo as a charity fight, I, I, I got to leave that alone Not for now. Not charity. Because, well, that's, that's, that's where you're going. You know, he's, he's, he's doing something for his brother. I, I get it. No. Okay. All right. Starting now, now let's get back to right. overhyping right. here. Talk about a slickster. This man across from me <laughs> has omitted, he's has, a New Yorker. Has he's omitted from Queens. the key detail of this entire discussion. Look, I, I, I'm, I, I, will I, give you, you I, I will give you this. The media did overhype Manny Pacquiao because the, of what the media did not know going into the fight, which was that Manny had not sparred for the month leading up to the fight and that he asked for an injection, a pain-killing injection, mm -hmm. on the night of the fight because he had a torn labrum in his shoulder that would immediately require surgery. Yep. You omitted that key detail. So how can you say that 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 the media was overhyping the ring record of manny pacquiao do i have to remind you did we overhype what he did to de la hoya even though you say de la hoya was shot and he had, oh he absolutely had to, okay okay but, but listen walking. okay but listen he was just a flat-out dead man because that was a rout that night and that right. was a boxing display that pacquiao put on weight, 145. okay okay Go ahead. What, what happened to ricky hatton at the hands oh, of pacquiao yeah. Destroyed okay. all right, all right. Destroyed. how about miguel cotto a man that you have great respect for I do. that was tko and 12 and Cotto raved about Manny's power plus his speed that he'd never encountered that much power plus speed mm -hmm. in the ring and then we start going to Clotty and Margarito and remember Sugar Shane Mosley raved about Manny Pacquiao after that fight after he got his butt beat and then listen Timothy Bradley he lost twice I don't care what you say he lost twice and he is a stud game fighter to me and we he's, agree there. he's we the agree. one you, we you agree this there. is the man you want you want to talk about you're in for a long night you're gonna be in for and, and Floyd would have been in for a long night if he had taken Bradley in this fight instead of Bradley, Berto. Bradley doesn't have power but he, okay, but, he but can he, box hey, he can fight and he can hey, take a punch he can he's take tough. A I got a lot of respect punch. for Timothy and that first Bradley. fight was the all-time robbery I have ever witnessed when the, they somehow gave it to Bradley over Pacquiao but then look Juan Manuel Marquez that, that that was the fourth fight we're talking about I have to remind you that that Manny had beaten if they even call the first fight a draw I have no idea yes. that was another robbery mm -hmm. but he had beaten him two previous times in the fights two and three and then he was just bored I got to fight this guy four time because Floyd was a chicken Floyd was running and running and Disrespect. running for Manny Pacquiao so and he finally got shamed into having to do it for the for the sake of his legacy because you even admitted you can't cannot retire with that big glaring asterisk on your record Absolutely. ran from Manny Pacquiao so what you know thank you God Pacquiao tears his labrum before the fight okay I want to see a real fight I want to see a you second say, you fight say, you say before the fight I say probably oh, yeah. during the fight okay. all those misses but probably all probably, those probably. So, so that's why he didn't I mean, spar for the whole if, month I, if, I, if I swing and miss 400 times yeah. I'd hurt my labrum okay. too all right that's fine you know but now Floyd is sitting back taking pot shots at Manny Pacquiao saying oh he didn't push me to be my best yeah Floyd because you fought a one-arm fighter are you proud of that because I wouldn't be I'd be a Ashamed of it, and if if Floyd Mayweather Jr. does not rematch with Manny Pacquiao in fight number 50, he's going to be shamed again. He certainly be shamed from this position. I disagree. Let me tell you this: 
I believe that, uh, and again, I'm on the record. Uh -huh. Floyd cannot end his career fighting Andre Berto. That can't be your last fight on the books. And, and you know what? If, I if, don't if, believe he and, will. And I don't believe he will yeah. either. I, I think this, and I have no problem with him fighting Berto because it's a tune-up. If it's not a tune-up, that's an entirely different matter. But as long as he fights after Berto, I'm not going to have any problem with this being a potential tune-up. It does not have to be Manny Pacquiao. I would prefer that it's Manny Pacquiao, but Manny Pacquiao needs to come and apologize to Floyd for sitting there and using that as a weak excuse. You ain't got no business. You, you, you showed up you, in the you, ring. You, you need showed up surgery in the, ring. the next day, and it's not up. an excuse. Oh, Are I'm, you kidding I'm not me? sure the surgery that, was the next day. I know that's what Bob say. Arum and probably Freddie Roach are saying, but I don't know that. Oh. Let me tell you something right now. I got no problems. And nobody, let me tell you something. You know anything about boxing. You're not going to have a problem with, with, with Mayweather fighting Canelo Alvarez or Cotto next instead of Manny Pacquiao. I got news for you. That's a mega fight if he fights one of those two. Stay the hell away from Triple G, Gennady, Gennady Golovkin. Mm -hmm. Don't fight that boy. He's too big for you. Stay the hell away from him. But you're talking about Canelo or Miguel Cotto? Absolutely, that would be a mega fight. And if you want to go to Macau and fight Manny Pacquiao when so you know make sure you have folks that go to the doctor's office make sure that mm -hmm. we see it on camera the medical exams we want to see the x-rays we will we want to make sure there's we nothing will. torn there's you nothing sprained or strained I'll hold we them up. To, that's yep. right that's right. right all right we can okay. do that just to be we clear 50 and one please that's what's just to happen. be clear please. September 12th I shouldn't be booking travel September 12th no. Berto Mayweather. Uh, what, oh, you you're not going I mean, I might, I might be there, but 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 we're, I don't blame, I don't blame everybody for not looking okay. forward to this. Yeah. Not after the Pacquiao thing. It should be somebody better, but this is a tune-up. It's a okay. charity fight. I'll it's donate. Yeah. I'll not donate. charity. It's a tune-up. Oh, it's a tune-up. <laughs> you can have my 75. Uh, God, no. Andre Berto. We know Mayweather's the undisputed champ. We have another champion in the house. Actually, we're not in the house. We're outside here at the desk. It's Troy Brown, a three-time Super Bowl champion. Come on over. He did it on both sides of the ball patriots hall of famer how are you thank you so much for joining us we got a lot to What's talk to you on? about good to see you, good see you man. thank you <laughs> first take is brought to you by the new dq rollo minis blizzard treat it's summer in a cup and by the beauty rest recharge line get your beauty rest Devin McCourty won't be able to join us, but our next guest is a 10-year NFL vet. He led the Patriots last season with eight sacks, but more importantly, he's now a Super Bowl champ defensive end, Rob Ninkovich. Thank you so much for joining us. That sounds nice. I like that. You I like figured that? you'd say that. You like I figured you'd say that. There's a good ring a to of, it. A lot of hard work uh, going into that one. So, you know, again, I'm excited to add that to the resume. What's your chances of repeating? Wolfuck's gone. Revis is gone. Brown is gone. What's your chances? Starts right now in training camp. You know, again, this is where you put in all the hard work. Um, you know, this is this is where it starts. You know, when you put in the, those long days of training camp, put the pads back on. Uh, you know, it feels good to be back out here with my teammates, and uh, you know, I'm excited. What's the mindset of the team right now with this whole Deflate Gate suspension hanging over the? the really, issue? you know, just focus on what you can do. Um, you know to be a better football player you know for me every day coming in doing the best that I can um, to be a better football player even at year 10 you know I'm still learning still trying to progress as a defensive end and uh, you know again it, for me it's exciting that you know all that stuff happened last year but it's over with and uh, you really have to you know, close that book that's over with, start a new book, and, uh, you know, it starts in training camp. All this deflate gate stuff, how much of a motivational factor do you think that's going to be for the team this season? You know, again, it, there's always motivating factors, uh, you know, for, for teams. And, you know, for my personal goals, you know, I'm always motivated. You know, every year I'm motivated to go out there and uh, play to the best of my abilities and, you know, continue to, to carry on, you know, that Patriot tradi tradition, which is, you know, playing good football and, um, you know, being a willing, winning team. What do you see from Tom Brady right now out here on this practice field? Any different? Is he more gunned up than usual, or he's just same old Tom? Tommy's always gunned up. I yeah. mean, you know, Tom is a tremendous competitor. Uh, you know, no matter what he's doing, he's, he's competing. He's trying to be the best at what he does. So, uh, you know, every day he comes out here and, you know, he hides, holds everyone to a high standard. And, uh, you know, that, that's what it's supposed to be like, you know, holding everyone accountable. Troy Brown was just on our desk and he described him as pissed. <laughs> is that fair to say? You know, again, like I said, Tommy is a tremendous competitor uh, and he's always competing. 
and he's always trying to be the best at what he does. How much will you indeed miss a Revis and a Browner? You know, again, every year there's going to be uh, turnover in the National Football League. You see it in every single team. Um, you know, there's guys coming, there's guys going, and, you know, really you just have to adjust and you have to, um, you know, work hard in training camp with the guys that are here and move forward. I'm, you know what? I think somebody's got a chance to knock y'all off. That's right. I said it. I said it. I said it. Right. I said it. Guess what? I'm oh, looking at it. We, went in, we were in Florida Park, New Jersey. I know they don't have, I know it's quarterback questions. Buffalo, New York, to a lesser degree, Miami. But I think how tough it might be in the AFC East might be a little bit tougher than you're accustomed to because of the dominance that y'all have displayed. One last six uh, uh, AFC East titles. You know, there's always every every Sunday is a tough football game. You know, every every team in the league has tremendous football players. So, you know, to be a good football team, you have to practice well, you have to put in the time, you have to put in the effort. And, you know, I feel like we do that every year. You know, we put in the time, we put in the effort. We do the things that you need to do to win in this in this league. So, you know, again, this year's no, like no other year. You know, we're just going to come out here and we're going to work hard and we're going to, you know, go out there and but play good it, football. But isn't it fair to say, Mr. Nikovich, that it's really about the fact that you have Tom Brady. That's why y'all ain't worried. Isn't that, isn't that fair to say? You know, say? again, Tom is, a, Tom is a tremendous quarterback. I love Tom right. as my quarterback. And, uh, you know, again, he's going to compete. He's going to do like he, like he always does. And that's, that's be Tom and play at a high level. Okay. Stephen A., this is the perfect New England Patriot. This <laughs> yeah, is the yeah, perfect yeah. Belichick. Right. Totally. Right. Totally. He can play. You've adapted yeah. to the Patriot yeah. way. Yeah. No, no, no. That's, that's who he is. That's who he is. I got, right. I'm not mad at him. You, you can just pepper him with questions all day long, and he will continue. Well, we're running out of time, so yeah. I can't. I wish I could. I wish I could because I got some hey, questions about that be defense. Here. I'll be here all day. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> Got to take it game by game. That's, that's right. He can One do that. One game at a time. That's what happens when you're a Super Bowl champion. He yes, congratulations again on that. And our uh, tour is over, guys. Back yeah. in Bristol on Monday. I want to say happy birthday to our producer, Brian Bork. Thank you so much. How old happy is he, 50? Birthday. Yeah. Is he 50? No. I think it's a think milestone like one. I think it's dirty 30. Yep, I put you on blast. Yeah. Sorry there. All right, back from Bristol, ESPN2 on Monday. Thank you to the Patriots, the Jets, the Bills for having us, our little AFC store. And thanks you to both of you gentlemen for being wonderful as always. Have a great weekend. Thank you for making Thank it you. out here, man. Thanks, Appreciate man. It, man. Thank, Thank you so much.